Hello, everyone. I am Lin Wei, an AE engineer from G High. Today, I will introduce to you G High APM 32F072 eval and its SDK. There are three parts. The first is an overall overview, the second is the hardware parameters of the evaluation board, and the final is an introduction to the SDK. Now let's get straight to the point. APM 32F072 eval is a complete demonstration and development platform for the APM 32F0XX series entry-level MCU. It includes an APM 32F072 VBT6 ARM Cortex M0 plus 32-bit microprocessor with 128 kilobytes flash. The evaluation board includes the following peripheral functions. It can be configured with an eval board SDK, which can help developers quickly develop their own development applications. It includes TFT LCD, EEPROM, SPI Flash, and TSC, as well as a potentiometer, USB, SD, NICC, buttons and LED functions. Next, let's take a look at the hardware parameters. From the picture on the right, we can see that from left to right, there is a potentiometer, a JTAG interface, a USB interface, a USB to serial port interface, a 5V DC socket, a CAN interface, a touch keyboard, and a user button. There is an LED and a battery socket in the middle, and the CEC interface of HDMI is located on the far left. Now let's take a look at the parameters of each interface. First is the power supply. The APM 32F072 eval evaluation board can be powered by an external 5V DC power supply or by USB. The JTAG interface can directly power the MCU, while other circuit peripherals need to be powered by the onboard voltage regulator. Another is the battery interface, which is a CR1220 standard battery interface. Next is the clock. The APM 32F072 eval has two external clocks when fully loaded. X1 is a 32.768 kHz clock, and it can be used for RTC and other internal peripherals. X2 is an 8 MHz clock. If we use the internal RC clock of the chip, this clock can be removed or the HSE enable can be turned off. Two reset signals are provided. The first is through the reset button. And the second is the JTAG reset signal. The onboard simulation interface is a standard 20-pin IDC JTAG connector. The LCD screen provides a 2.4-inch TFT LCD screen with 240 by 320 pixels. The control chip is ILI9341, and it can be driven by the SPI bus. There are four universal red LED lights, and the buttons are four ordinary buttons, which can be used for LCD menu switching or other input purposes. The EEPROM uses a 24C32 and it can be driven by I2C peripheral. The flash is a fully loaded flash chip that provides 2 MB external storage space and can be driven by SPI. There are two HDMI interfaces, which are CN2 and CN3. The final are touch buttons. There are five touch buttons here, which are connected to the two capacitive sensor channels in group 1 and the three content sensor channels in group 2, as shown in the figure in the bottom right corner. After we have learnt the hardware parameters, finally I will introduce the SDK. The SDK includes many applications that are easy to reuse, such as can double computer communication, EEPROM reading and writing, LCD multi-level menu, RTC calendar, TSC, HDMICC double computer communication, etc. Some practical routines can help you quickly develop your own application routines. The first routine is ADC. Here a 10K potentiometer is used as the sampling source. We can adjust the knob on the target to change the instantaneous resistance of the potentiometer. Here, for AD sampling, a channel 9 is used and the sampling value will be displayed in real time on the LCD screen and be converted into the stable voltage. The second routine is CAN. The CAN here is a double computer communication, 
which is used to demonstrate how to use the CAN communication between two boards. We can download the same firmware for those two boards. We can see a send and a receive displayed on the screen. On the send side, there is STDID and EXTID, as well as length and data. On the right side is receive, and it can receive signals. Whenever we press K1, the CAN host will send a trigger signal of K1. The third routine is I2C. The I2C here is mainly used for reading and writing onboard EEPROM. The device of the onboard EEPROM is at 24C32. The device address is 0xA0 and the addressing address is 16 bits. The entire routine test process is to write and read 255 data into EEPROM and compare them. Another routine is CEC. Before introducing CEC routine, let's learn the relevant knowledge of CEC. CEC is a single bus protocol, part of the HDMI standard, and allows AV products to find devices and communicate between systems. The CEC enables the devices connected through HDMI to operate each other, thereby reducing the number of IR remote controllers and buttons required for basic operation of the system. Through this introduction, we can know that CEC is mainly used for the operation of HDMI devices, such as remote controllers and handles. Next, let's learn its hardware structure. The CEC bus consists of a two-link link used to transmit data to and from devices. It is connected to a 3.3V supply voltage through a 27K omega pull-up resistor. Here we should note that when designing the hardware, the CEC line needs to be pulled to a 3.3V voltage through a 27K omega pull-up resistor. Next, let's take a look at the message structure. All transmissions on the CEC line are composed of one initiator and one or more followers. The initiator is responsible for sending the message structure and data, while the follower is the receiver of any data, and is responsible for setting the response bit. Look at the following figure. The transmission of a single message frame includes a start bit, a header block, and an opcode. This opcode and a variable number of operand blocks are the final operand, which is optional, and is finally transmitted, while it is a high configuration before transmission. Now let's take a look at the message block. It includes the header block I just mentioned and the opcode slash overland block. Each type of block contains an EOM and an ACK. If EOM is zero, it indicates that one or more data blocks follow it. One indicates that the transmission has been completed. ACK mainly indicates the message that the receiver is still requesting. And one represents a NACK. The initiator address and target address in the header block each occupy 4 bits. While the opcode and operand blocks contain 8 bits of valid data. Next, let's take a practical example. The initiator is concatenated with 0x3 when sending data to the target address and obtains a CEC version. The first four bits in the header block correspond to the initiator address, 0x0, and the last four bits correspond to the target address, 0x3. If EOM is 0, it indicates that there are subsequent data blocks. The opcode and operand blocks contain 8-bit valid data, corresponding to 0x9f. The 0x9f command indicates a fixed command to obtain the CEC version number, and the EOM of 1 indicates that there are no subsequent data blocks. After learning the hardware structure and message structure, let's look at two important concepts. The first concept is physical address. In order to enable CEC to address the specific physical devices, each device has a physical address. Whenever HPD detects a change in device connection or connection status, DDC will display the data channel or expand the display of identification data. The other address is logical address. Except for the physical address, each device appearing on the control signal line has a unique logical address, which defines the device type and the unique identifier in the address. This logical address can be assigned only when the device address is valid. Now let's look at the specific logical address, which is the corresponding identifier. 
For example, as shown in the table below, the address 0 represents TV, the address 1 and address 2 represent the recording devices, and the addresses 3 to 15 represent different identifiers. 14 is a freely accessible identifier and we can use this identifier as a status identifier before the logical address is assigned. There is also an opcode. Each of our different opcode codes represents different functions and their scope. For details, we can refer to the CEC and HDMI specifications version 1.3. The following table shows an opcode of a user control pressed, with a code of 0x44. It carries its operand. There is a series of operands under the 0x44 opcode, and different operands represent different functions. For example, we can see from the table below that to operate the volume plus under the operation code 0x44, its operand is 0x41. Similarly. The operand of volume is 0x42. After the main hardware structure and message structure of CEC are introduced, let's take a look at the routines. The dual target same line routine of CEC demonstrates how to use CEC to communicate between two APM 32F072 eval boards. The same two boards can download the same firmware, and the initiator address and target address above mentioned can be selected from the menu. The connection structures of the two hardware are connected from the CN3 interface. Regarding selection of device address, we can select different device addresses for two boards. For example, device address 1 is selected for the first board and device address 2 is selected for the second board. After the device initialization menu is entered, either the initiator address or the target address will be displayed. The operation interface is divided into two areas, the send area and the receive area. The preset volume plus, volume dash, silence, play, stop, and other commands can be selected and sent to the target address through the buttons. We can display the receive target command information in the receive area of the menu, including from which address it is sent, its length, opcodes, and operands. This is the routine of CEC. Next is the routine of LCD menu. This routine mainly demonstrates how to use SPI to drive a 2.4 inch LCD and external buttons can be used to switch among different menu pages. Next is a routine for RTC clock. This routine uses RTC peripherals and displays an example of an RTC calendar on an LCD screen. The SDK also includes a RTUS routine. Here we can see the Tencent OS Tiny. It is a real-time operating system developed by Tencent for the field of the Internet of Things. It has the characteristics of low power consumption, low resource occupancy, modularization, safety and reliability. It can effectively improve the development efficiency of IoT terminal products. The example in the SDK shows a multitask management example. There are two tasks here. Task 1 is to update the voltage display of the LCD and print its hello world. Task 2 is to collect the voltage value of the potentiometer and transmit it to task 1, and finally display it on the menu. There is a routine, which shows how to use SPI peripherals to read and write an external flash chip. The model of this chip is W25Q16 and it has a size of 2 megabytes. The test process is simple reading flash ID and device ID, writing the read data to flash, and finally comparing them. Next is a touch button routine for TSC. This touch button routine mainly displays the response results of touch buttons. Next is polling of USART. The routine of this polling is receiving window data by polling. The test process is to send a string 123456 to the upper computer through USART1. The upper computer returns the same string 123456. And finally the lower computer conducts a transaction matching and displays the matching result. There is also a routine which adopts interrupt mode and its test process and polling process are the same and will not be repeated. The final is a USB routine. 
The first routine here is to demonstrate how to use USB CDC virtual com after the device is connected to the PC. The data can be sent from the serial assistant to the device, and the device will return the same data to the PC. The second USB routine is an HID mouse, and key 1 to key 4 can be used to simulate the mouse to slide up, down, left, right. The last routine is an MSC device of USB, and the internal RAM space of APM32F072 can be used to simulate a U-Disk. Finally, there are some manuals and tools used in the entire introduction. You can refer to them. That's all for the introduction. Thank you for listening. Welcome to follow G High Media account for more information. Thank you.